If you're wondering if Topaz Photo AI is still a really good software to purchase in 2025, you're in the right place. My name is Austin James Jackson, professional outdoor photographer based in Southern Utah. In today's video, we're talking about Topaz Photo AI. Now, I've reviewed this software numerous times in the past on how good it works, how good it works compared to other softwares, and if it's worth purchasing. Uh, I haven't made a video in almost a year now, so it's about due to talk about if it's still worth it to buy in 2025. I'm gonna walk you through a lot of the new features on the software, as well as kind of show you how it works with many images that are unsharp, noisy, um, and other things like that. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. You'll probably notice that I'm here in Lightroom. It's just how I organize my photos, but regardless of how you organize yours, it doesn't really matter. Um, I will say it is best to use raw files in Topaz Photo AI as opposed to using like a TIFF or something else. So keep that in mind. We'll talk a little bit about that later and I'll show you why. First thing I wanna do is show you this photo here, which you can see I'm lacking a little bit of sharpness. These little outers are not quite super sharp. So the way that you can launch this is either you can sh uh, right click and show in Finder, drag and drop this down to Topaz Photo AI, which is down here in my menu box or you can go up to file and this is if you're in Lightroom um, you can go to file you can go down to plugin extras and then process with Topaz photo AI and this will load it in here as a raw file you want to make sure it's a raw file ARW is Sony's raw file now once you're in here this may automatically detect what needs to be done it doesn't really need to be denoised but I'm okay with it you know it's sensing that a little denoise wouldn't hurt me we'll zoom in using command plus a little bit as always you can slide the bar the denoise helps a little bit you can see there's a little bit of color noise that we're removing moving here um, when we slide this bar. The bar is super helpful. I always recommend selecting that if you do have the software because you can kind of see the before and after just like that. Now in this photo, what we want to do is probably sharpen because we want to make our subject a little bit sharper. So you can see just by clicking that, it automatically chooses some settings and it does a pretty decent job. But you can increase the strength. You can play around with the settings here to get it to where you want it. Uh, obviously, if you go too much, it starts to look kind of overcooked. This is also just sharpening the subject, which is great. You can go in and adjust if there's different part of the image, like if you wanted to sharpen all. I mean, you can also go in here and make adjustments, try different AI models. Like this is actually looking a little bit better, I think, in my opinion. I'm gonna drop the denoise all the way, but you can see how you have a lot of options here and it does a pretty decent job. Of course, it's not gonna be perfect and there is super focus, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. That's a really nice feature, but that's kind of how the sharp works. Now let's talk a little bit about denoising uh, because this is a review video. I want it to be totally honest and I will, I'll show you some limitations here of the denoise. So this is the raw file here. You can see it's shot at ISO 5000 and it's underexposed. So it is quite noisy and quite unsharp. So let's do the same thing. We will load this one up into photo AI and then we'll talk about some of the limitations that we have. You can see it's automatically analyzing all the stuff over here when you load in. This is in real time. I'm not speeding this up at all. On my computer, it works pretty fast. I've got a relatively newer MacBook Pro. You can see it does a really nice job removing the noise here. And I'm pretty happy with how that's done. You know, I'm always checking for artifacts and stuff like that. You can see it's adding some little white spots here, but that's not a huge deal. I think you're going to see that across the, the market with other denoisers as well. Um, but on this image, we might try to go in, you know, and you might want to sharpen this one as well. Um, but you'll see on this one, the sharpening doesn't work too great. It kind of adds more spots. Get rid of the denoise there. You know, increase the sharpening as much as you want. You can kind of click around here, but you'll see like when I do lens blur, it can sometimes add some weird artifacts like this. So you are somewhat limited uh, in terms of how much you can recover. Obviously, the better off your image is to start with, um, the better it's going to be in the end. But let's look at another moose photo here that is actually properly exposed. So this is going to be a little bit better um, look. You know, it's only ISO 2000 and it's properly exposed. So you can see the noise isn't too severe. Um, now, same thing on this one. We'll do the raw denoise, um, which looks really good, I think. And then we might want to go in, you know, do the sharpen once again. We might select lens blur. You can kind of make the choice of what you want to select. And then you can see, you know, if it's maybe too strong or if it's adding some kind of artifacting there, you can drop that down. Um, additionally, you can try different AI models. There's lots of models to choose from. That one looks a lot better if you ask me. We'll just increase it by a lot right now, just so you can kind of see it happen. But I think that's looking pretty good there. So you can see the results are, are pretty decent when you've got an image that is workable to begin with. You can see this image isn't too bad to start and it does a pretty nice job all the way across the board. Now I wanna make sure not all my examples are wildlife. I know there's a lot of wildlife people that need software like this, but there's also a lot of landscape photographers, people that are following my channel here that will find great use out of photo AI. So we've got a Milky Way photo here. This is obviously a common thing that's gonna be pretty high noise. Shot at ISO 6400, I haven't stacked this or anything. I just simply 
shot this Milky Way photo of one of my clients out in the field. So when we zoom in to the Milky Way here, you can see once again, it's done a great job removing that color noise. It hasn't killed the Milky Way and it hasn't made my stars look too terrible. You can also try using a the stronger denoising whatever you want but you can do the same thing the nice thing here you can go down you know you could do your sharpen here you can also look at the suggestions down here um, such as sharpen or you know you can adjust some of these things so you might just hit sharpen all let that load out now with star photos there's a lot of different models having those models is nice because if you've seen any of my other videos where i'm using um, a denoise here, like in Lightroom, when you denoise a photo like this, uh, the stars generally look pretty poor because it's trying to do a sharpening, but there's not much customization. Whereas here, I can go through and try many different models and see how they look to find the one that looks the best. Like you can see, this one doesn't look very good. This is kind of what it looks like when you do this in Lightroom. So you'd want to go with something else. Lots of options here to choose from is really nice to be able to click through. If you've got a fast computer, even better because you can see I can click through here and this is just in real time. This isn't fast forwarded at all. So I can try the different models I can once I find the model that looks good I can adjust the strength and then go from there to make my Milky Way photos look really good so these high noise landscape outdoor you know astro photos are gonna look pretty good using this software as well so I want to talk about some of the additional features here in photo AI that are available um, right now you can see I'm using version 3.5.2 this is updated as of mid-march 2025 but they're always adding more features so more things may come in the future um, as you look at this, there's lots of options here, you know, adjust lighting, balance color, recover faces, preserve text, upscale. Um, to be honest with you, adjust lighting and balance color are things that I truly would rather just do in a different photo editor. I don't think there's anything too particularly special about it. I've tried them, but I'm not going to waste time in this video covering them because I don't really think they're worth using and I don't think a lot of people are using them. And then recover faces is something if you're doing like portraits or image recovery that can work pretty well, but it's again, not something that we're doing a lot as outdoor photographers. And that's mostly what my channel here is for. Um, and then preserve text, same thing. There's not a lot of text that we need to be preserving. Upscale works great, but if you're just needing a software for upscale, I would definitely just think about getting Gigapixel. Gigapixel works really nice for upscaling those images, and I think that Photo AI is a little bit overkill. If all you need to do is upscaling, you don't need to denoise and sharpen. But if you do need to denoise and sharpen, having this upscale is also nice to resize your images when you need to make them larger, say for printing or for web or something like that. We're gonna go into some of the um, special features here, like the Super Focus, beta. You'll notice on this image, it's these Joshua trees in the snow from far away, and they're not very sharp. There's either I missed focus or there's some heat distortion or probably a little bit of both. So if I go in here and I try to use sharpen, um, it's not going to work very well. I want to do sharpen all, not just sharpen subject. You can see it's not bad, but it's also not amazing. So we have something that's called super focus, which is in beta right now. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it's not in beta anymore. Um, and I've been playing around with this. It works pretty decently. So you click this button, open it up, and then it gives you a box. The box is going to be basically where the preview is. The reason why you just do a very small preview, um, you can see I have a small preview here is because it takes a little bit of time to load. Essentially how this works is it uses generative AI to basically correct this. So you can decide how you feel about generative AI and using it for something like this. But you can see, you know, it's done a pretty nice job. And this is with low sharpened strength. We can of course go higher if we want but then it might look a little bit wonky and you can also do a focus boost you can see here focus boost corrects images that are missing detail by downscaling the image and upscaling the results back to the original quality so this looks pretty decent you know i would probably do low um, you can adjust the size of the preview here if you wanted a i'll have to zoom out so you can see this you see larger preview medium preview and then we have the small preview out there right now um, once you are done with this, if when you want to render it, you can either click render here, which will just render it right in front of you. Um, I did that and on my computer, which runs pretty fast. I, it gave me a 36 minute time to render, which is not a big deal if you know you want to get up and go get a, get your lunch or whatever. Um, but if you need it faster, you can do cloud render, which I believe uses the cloud credits, which do cost money. Um, and that's just about three minutes, which I rendered this image. Um, and it was true to be right about three minutes. Now, I do want to mention some limitations of the software. Um, previously, in years past, it worked really well to use this at the very end of your edit, which for me would be ideal. I like to edit my image all the way through and then go back later and do that denoise and sharpen because oftentimes there might be some weird artifacts or something like that. If the, you do the denoise or sharpen at the beginning of your edit and there's something weird that you don't notice, then you edit your photo. Now you have no way to go back. You have to go all the way back, remove all the edits, 
to fix the original file. Whereas if you were to do the denoise or sharpen at the end of your photo edit, um, you could easily just get rid of that and re-denoise or resharpen without having to remove all your edits. That being said, for some reason lately, it's not working very well to do anything other than raw files in there, um, which is really unfortunate. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. So let's say, you know, I have some edits on this photo. This is the raw file here, but let's say I had these edits and I was happy with edits and I didn't want to go back. So I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to take this photo and I'm going to edit it with photo AI. So we'll go in, uh, edit in, and then we'll do Topaz photo AI. Now we're editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So it's not going to pull in a raw file. It's going to pull in a TIFF file. Um, it'd be the same thing if you were working in Photoshop and you launched it as a plugin, it's going to open as a TIFF here. This generally is going to give you a little bit worse results and I will show you why. So this coyote is sharp-ish, but not amazingly sharp. Let's go in and try and sharpen here and I will show you the problem with this. So if I go in and I really want to get aggressive with the sharpen, it's kind of producing some artifacts. This doesn't look great in here. You can try different models, but you know, that doesn't look good. Um, that doesn't look great. That doesn't, you know, it's a little bit weak, but yeah, that one's not great either. Um, that doesn't look good. So by putting a non raw file in here, you are a little bit limited and, and I believe it would be the same thing with the denoise. The denoise is probably not going to look quite as bad, but, um, you always want to load in with a raw file, which is unfortunate that it doesn't work quite as good with a TIFF file, but I don't think that's a limitation of the software. I think it's just a limitation of the file type in general. Now, lastly, if you're thinking about buying Topaz Photo AI, you're probably wondering about other market options that are out there. I've done a ton of videos in the past reviewing all the different noise reduction softwares compared to Topaz Photo AI. And truly the only thing that compares is DxO Pure Raw 4 um, with their denoising technology. It works great. It's very, very similar in results. Um, and it is slightly less expensive. I will say it doesn't have quite as many capabilities because you can't upscale your images. So for a photographer like me, I want to be able to upscale my images for when I'm printing. Um, and I also think that DxO doesn't quite have as um, useful or as easy to use of an interface as Topaz has. Topaz is so easy to use. Anybody with thumbs can use this thing. It is just so easy. Everything's on the right side. Everything's well explained and described. Whereas DxO is not quite as easy to use. It takes a little bit more finesse. You know, it's harder to fine tune dialing your image. But if you really know what you're doing with DxO there, I think you can create just the same results as you can here with Photo AI. Now, after watching this video, if you're gonna pick up Topaz Photo AI, I've included a link down below where you can pick it up at. This video is not sponsored at all. Topaz isn't paying me to make this video. They don't even know I'm making this video. But if you do use my link, it does get me a little bit of a kicker. Um, but again, it's not enough of a kicker that I'm going to give you false information. If I thought another software was better, I'd simply promote that and use their link instead. I really do think Photo AI really gives you the best options for sharpening and denoising your images. Um, and it's really a must have for anyone that's a wildlife or outdoor photographer or anyone that just shoots in harsh conditions where either your images might not be super sharp, they might be noisy. And I know ideally we get everything right in the field, but there are certain situations, um, night photos, wildlife, things that are moving fast where you just can't get it perfect in the field. So software like this helps you to make your images a little bit cleaner. So use that link down below. If you have any questions about the software, let me know. More than happy to help you out and answer all your questions. Otherwise, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're serious about improving your photography. Again, my name is Austin James Jackson. Thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you guys next time.